You know, it always blows my mind. <laughs> this is how you know I'm a proud dad. I'm like, the tiny human being just has this talent. As a clinician, I can boldly say her tone quality and, and confidence in sound has greatly improved. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, she's she's done a, another stint with the uh, Youth Symphony. Good. And she's started up again, so we're, we're working lots of stuff. That's one of my favorite songs, man. That's uh, Japanese lullaby. Um, this is the little one, the tiny violinist. But you know what? We're actually uh, in studio today. We are. For episode 18. 18. I can't believe we made it to 18. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. I haven't fired you yet. I know. <laughs> but you had mentioned before, Keith, that we were going to do some... Um, character highlights. Yes. Some of my favorite episodes. I love... See, it's just, you know, a lot of people walk around the fair. Yes. And they see the musicians. No, they walk. We drudge. Okay. Uh, But they see the musicians. They see the actors. But they may not realize, especially with the musicians, because that's, you know, stuff that I really like. Um, You know, being a musician myself, I understand how hard it is to get all that, you know, the the practice time, right. you know, the dedication to your craft, right? You know, and so that's why I thought, man, it would be good to get you know people on the show that um, you know practice that you know that the are craft. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So today we've got uh, we've got the giggling fiddler. We do the one, the only, only Arlen, Arlen McNaughty. McNaughty. Naughton. McNaughty. <laughs> Mc- oh yes, he's McNaughty. <laughs> McNaughty Naughton. That's that's behind the scenes. Shh. And one of his proteges. Uh, <laughs> this will come up here in a little bit, but uh, this is the tiny violinist, the tiny human, if you will. Yes. Uh, this is my little one. Hello, little one. This is her name is Ashlyn, and she is uh, two she, years in the violin, but we'll, she is a few words. She has very a few words, but that's okay. We're going to get her out of that. Uh, so we are going to talk about all about your character today. Yes. So do us a favor. Introduce yourself, sir. Thank you so much. Would you like me to stay in character? Or oh, it's up to you, me? man. I mean, we you, don't we go in and out of character, but it's, <laughs> it's 100% up to you. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, if you want to give your real name, um, a lot of times we actually avoid last names. So it sure, just kind of okay. keep it that way. Well, absolutely. Well, I'm Royston. I am. I live music, and I live for not only what I get to do with it in the studio, but I live what I get to do with it in the streets. Now, in the streets, I am Arlen, as you said, the giggling fiddler, McNaughton, humble bard, and court musician to the king at your service. Which is awesome. That's Fantastic. actually how I met you. That's right. That's, that's really how That's I right. met you. Did they you. know the story? Should no, not yet. We'll tell that in a little bit. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we're going to do some real fun stuff there. But first, before we do that, we got to talk about our unofficial sponsorship. Unofficial today, sponsorships. Which is, um, everybody asks about boots. Boots. And uh, cats. Boots and cats. Boots and, and cats, cats and cats. And cats. Sorry. Oh, a little yeah. bit of tangent there. Um, <laughs> it, I can't help it. Uh, yeah, Keith actually wears these guys. I do. Uh, I, have a, I have a pair of Sun of Sandlar boots. Which are absolutely fantastic. I've had them for years, and still don't need to have them resold. So I, I highly suggest them. See the upcoming video. You'll see me. I'm wearing them as well. You see oh, the curled wow. toes. Oh, those see, are there you go. Boots. Yes. Wow. And I completely agree. Um, those they are indestructible. <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've beat the I beat the crap out of them. And I they, do. They, I just, they're like the Timex of boots. She, she sold hers after having worn them for ten years. Sold them to a current cast member for near. 
Oh, near wow. what she paid for. Yeah. Them. Wow. Good quality. I, that, that, so they, they maintain their, yeah. their resale Now, value. as with quality, just like with cars, it requires good maintenance like anything else of good quality yes. wood. Yes, sure. Do, of course. Sure. But at the, that being said, um, I stand by those. They are wonderful. And it's, I get more compliments on those than I do on my tremendously good looks. So I find that hard. <laughs> I find that hard to I believe. I find that. Sir, you lie. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> Of course, when they say, "Oh, I lo- oh, your toes are curled," I say, "Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. It's curled toe syndrome. It's very embarrassing." Oh, there's a backstory <laughs> behind that, but we can't talk about that wow. right now. <laughs> she keep disappearing. Why are you disappearing? Because she's small. Where did you disappeared? Well, that's because I'm magical. <laughs> oh, is, oh, is that what, what we're going with? A... Eastern mysticism. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's just, it, but in the East, we just call it mysticism. Oh, oh yes, no. of course, of course, you do. <laughs> so. How long have you been at the festival? I, I I know because of this one, at least ten years. This will be. Um, we we have to throw in the the sort of year that was that was. No, COVID. we still count that. Okay, in that case, eleven. Eleven years. Eleven so years. Ten slash eleven. Yeah. So wow. Um, so if you watched our the we we, we did a just a, a brief. We're still thinking of you. Uh, uh, music video where we passed the cut from person to person. I'm in that as well. So that was, oh, that, that's cool. Yeah. So if you check that out, I don't get sure invited to those things. This, well, that's was, why I created this podcast and grabbed that. Oh, well, it was a couple. Of course, oh, it was, it was yeah. literally during COVID. So yeah. oh, 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 wow. Yeah, yeah, we were all at home, and and uh, they said, well, hey, why, why don't we go ahead and, and let's let's remind folks. And no, we are still. We may be stuck at home, but we are still just as excited about this. Oh as you my are. goodness, we're you terribly. It's fantastic. It was. It was a. Uh, yeah, no, that, that see, was very heartwarming. See, I sit over here and I, I, I have to, I have to fanboy a little bit. You got to scoot in a little. Oh, it's You're it's more if they see him. No, that's fine. Like, like I can only see half of you. I either should see you or not. Well, that's the good half. Um, I mean, <laughs> not that I have a bad half, of course. <laughs> you understand? Um, oh no, I, I fanboy a little bit because every year that I've gone to the fair, I've always seen him perform. Yes, it, it, you are the one person that generally seems like they're having a good time. Like you enjoy I, I always, what you're doing. Most not that the other musicians don't, but yours seems natural. It doesn't seem forced like, hey, thanks for doing I mean, you're out there and you're just doing your thing. And I'm like, dude, he loves being here. This guy loves being here. Well, thank you. So it's really so, that's it's really funny that you say that because <laughs> I too fanboyed when I got on cast. <laughs> See? And it was I'm I'm like Dude, that's the guy. Like we're at rehearsals. One of the rehearsals that I was there I was like, "That's the guy," and I'm like, "I gotta talk to him. I gotta talk to him." And I'm like, "Should I go talk to him? No, no, it'll look weird. No, should I go talk to him? No, it'll look weird. No, it'll look weird." And then I was like, <laughs> I finally came up to him. I was like, "Look, dude, I got something to tell you. Um, you know, we've been coming ever since. Yeah, we missed two years. So we missed 2016 because we were in Maryland. Um, the right before I retired out of the army." Um, and then we missed COVID. Obviously, everybody missed that. But we've been going since this one was one years old. So right. 2014 all the way to last year, um, we have gone all except for two years. Uh, and every single time I have found him. And when this one turned five, she was like, where's my friend? Where's my friend? Where's my friend? And I'm like, who are you talking about? And she's like, the man with the violin. And I'm like, oh. Let's go find him. <laughs> and so we would go and, and find him. But it's, you're absolutely right. Um, you, you have that. And, and this is the smarminess in me. I, I have to do this because it's funny. Arlen McNaughton has that look on his face when he is playing that he knows a joke. <laughs> and he's not telling. Yes. Because you're part of the joke. And that's yeah. the greatest thing in the world to me because it's like, it, it is it is so beautiful to see somebody that is in love with their music, in love with what they do, and laughing the entire time because that is beautiful to me. And it's hilarious when I can get you to giggle. <laughs> I don't know why. It just makes me it's like, yay! <laughs> Keith spotted number eight. He's gone. Yeah, Keith Keith is um he's a Goblin. That's okay. I'm still here. It's more important that we have Arlen on the screen than me. Yeah, the Goblin King calls Keith back every now and then. Yes. So, um, so, so I guess my my first question would be, what brought you to the fair? A dear friend of mine from Colorado State University. Uh, she noticed noticed that I was e- even being it, and this was kind of the running joke between CSU and UNC. And as de- dedicated as I was and still am to symphonic music, she she noticed that I like her was was still always the fiddler, 
oh. at various universities. Again, I, I and I could sit in symphony, string quartet, and to a jam session with complete fluidity, and I loved that. In fact, I, I didn't like doing just one. Right. I liked doing everything. That's this. One. And she said, you know, geez, you should you should check out uh, CRF. Um, and I said, why not? Why not? Um, it was kind of a perfect time because I ended up taking just a, a year off from school to uh, kind of uh, figure out a couple things and transition to school to UNC. Um, largely because I like their jazz department, but I went ahead and checked out um, CRF, and uh, just just between how I hit the timing, they, their auditions were done and their rehearsals were done, but I just dropped uh, Jennifer, who's the manager at the time, uh, entertainment director at the time, um, I dropped Jen a line and said, hey, you know, so I'm, I'm in the area and I'm interested, and I'd love to kind of see what this is about. I have been before. And um, with, with, with co- completely oblivious to the <laughs> the incredible thing that this would become in my life, I had no idea. Sure, I thought it, I thought at the time I thought at most, oh, you know, wouldn't this this, this could be fun? And um, I think it was just like with any starting anything new, I was I was genuinely terrified. But uh, but then I find I, that hard to believe. Oh, I do too. Well, you, you were you, such I was a, a bebe fearless... in those days. <laughs> okay, I'll give you yeah. that. Well, that's that's the thing, and we and we still we still um, call them that. I was a shiny. If, yeah, yeah. My armor was was beautiful and shiny and polished. Okay. Um. You know, you you you're not really in your zone until you're dinged and bashed and banged up. Uh. That's that's when you've earned your stripes, and it's wonderful. So um. And I show up with just a just a thinking of a, a vague idea of kind of what this would go about. No idea how. I not really a whole lot of acting experience to speak of. But I thought, just do the thing that I do. So they said they said. Just go, hop up on that stage, and just do your thing. Nice. That was pretty much all there was to it. And I thought, great. And I, and I thought, all I thought was, what when I when I watch you know a fiddler who I really like you know on stage, on YouTube, etc. You know what do I like about them? And of course, the first thing in human mind was fast, fiery, flashy energy, and they're having just as much fun. So that's exactly what I did. Hopped up there, and not knowing and not having any idea what their specific requirements or expectations or hopes were. I just went out and flew through. I can still vividly recall which sets I used. Um, and, and I still, and still use them to say they're just that good. It was actually Kate Breton, Kate Breton fiddling specifically. And I hopped up and they said, in essence, we love you. You're good to go. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's crazy though, man. It was, like it was, it was the most miscellaneous of, of things, but it was, it was, it was just fun. Like Keith and I talk about, our auditions as street cast members, uh, but we have zero idea on musicians' auditions. Yeah, I can't speak to anyone else's because mine, mine was very specific. Because right, again, but yeah, they they were. In fact, I believe everyone. You know what? Everyone was was already in in character, so okay. they, they must have been dress rehearsal weekend. Okay, or, or in the vicinity. Okay, they were definitely. Yeah, and then but I remember, since then, you you've kind of have you sat in on the auditions or anything like that? Have you been part of those? Yet. No, not, not yet. yet. Okay. Uh, but if, if you know, like, say, uh, the little one here wanted to try to audition, what would you recommend? Audiences in general only notice so much. Now, this, this speaks to people that are simply walking by, people that are sitting down, actively paying attention, and any combinations thereof. Um but the the first and foremost thing that that will take you beyond uh, whatever base talent and and base skill that you've already acquired is is your energy level and your excitement. Uh, that speaks in volumes. Sure. Um, I think a lot of people shy away from the performing arts in general because they worry. And I'm going to give you a classical example of this, um, or rather, Romantic era. Um, so many people f- feel that oh, I, I can't go in and, and go and present myself, present my finished product, because it's not perfect yet. It's not there yet. And they and and frankly, at ninety nine percent of that is just they're held back by their own very human but very very realistic worry and natural anxiety. And so that's something I actually work with a lot of my students on is saying, um, it it doesn't that 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 finished product a that concept doesn't exist. That's that, that's right. a completely fantastic Absolutely idea. Right. Um, a, I, I often say this too. Um, l- let's say let's say you did reach perfection that'd be boring that would be a it's unobtainable doesn't exist and b if it actually did that would be very uninteresting frankly that's kind of like uh what we talk about keith and i talk about the end then factor like when you're building a character there's the end then what comes next yeah and then what right you know uh any any great piece i I mean i i would agree with you if you asked if you asked mozart or bach or beethoven or any of the 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 greats hey 
do you realize how perfect this song is? They would probably tear it apart and go, no, it's not. Of course. We're always our own worst critic. In fact, Absolutely. This, this is the example that I was referencing. Um, Johannes Brahms didn't publish his first symphony until he was 40. Um, hey, now, so I'm still, I got time, <laughs> man. I got time. Yep, keep that in mind. You, you, was not you, much you different. Don't. I don't. Um, no, and don't. It, it terrified the hell out of him. He was, he, and the documentation will support this. He was terrified of that first publication. Uh, and let's be fair, he had big shoes to fill. Yes. He was big man Beethoven. Yes. Yeah. They, they, he was expected to be the next Beethoven. And long story short, he was. Go, go him. That right. But, but, but at the same point, that took him fear. It took him his whole life. Yeah. Up to that point, he finally did. Um, um, and and then what's what's rather hilarious? Uh, Sibelius, by the way, was not a whole lot different. Similarly, a very growing pains and very it took him forever to finally finally publish and premiere that first symphony. I'm sure he was biting his nails the whole time, but both of them, and Brahms in particular, then then then. Okay, there. And it was greatly received. It was a monumental success and still loved to this day. Um, then his second one only took him a couple months. And then he cracked yeah, us. Once you get that, past that hump, man. Very much yeah. so. You get out yeah. there. And I mean, I, and I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure somebody he would look back and go, I mean, yeah, just like you said, he would tear it. He would have torn it apart, yeah. too. That, 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 that is the nature of, of our own art is yeah. that we look back. That's and, what we do and, with the craft. I mean, one of, one of my uh, inspirations in my past life, I was, I was a journalist. Uh, for the military and one of my great inspirations said you know we're always looking and hunting for like this perfect thing and the greatest thing but you you and you're, you're trying to hold yourself back and wait for that one moment but it, it's more important to just do the work get out there it, yeah. yeah the first the first few things that you release are going to be garbage it's going to be a hot mess and you're going to you're going to hate it but just release it because as you go, and then you will get better and better and better, and you'll start to look back at all your stuff and go, okay, if I just tweak this a little bit, if I just do this a little bit. Um, yeah. I think one thing that really jumps to my mind along those lines, and uh, Asian, you're going to want to remember this too, um, you may not be aware of it during the process, but your audience, in whatever capacity that is, again, like I mentioned, is it sit down, is it mom and dad, is it, you know, et cetera. Right. People who are watching your steps, um, even at a very high level, they like seeing the work happen. They like seeing yes. the human elements. Absolutely, it's, uh, it's so easy, especially with mom and dad. And I, um, being in close proximity to my parents, I'm I'm still not all that comfortable practicing around my parents. But I remember that when I do, they're they're enjoying it more than I might realize. But what what I think of is, we all love watching. Um, when you watch, for example, especially like 90s era sitcoms, you know, Friends and, you know, the shows at that time. Sure. Um, let's face it. It was wonderful. As there's various shows are and then the special moments, the tender moments. Is it isn't the most fun thing to enjoy the blooper reel? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Why is that? Especially the live episodes. <laughs> Absolutely. And when the characters are trying so hard yeah. not to break character. It brings why do we the love human, that so much? We love the human seeing element. It's them the human trying element. so hard yes. not to laugh. Because exactly, yeah, we see their growth, and it means they're really there. Sure, a character is wonderful, but when you when when you see the human underneath, that makes it feel good. In addition to being entertaining. So when we look at like uh, going back to the auditions, you know, music auditions are going to be coming up here in April, um, sometime. We don't know when uh, that announcement will hit ColoradoRenaissance.com or on their Facebook page. Um, but if if I were to do something is there a number of songs that i should prepare a, a set list that i should have in mind well most typically with auditions and this and this everything from auditioning to join a band to join the renaissance festival okay. for symphony orchestra um short and sweet short is, and sweet yeah usually um now of course well I, I i should say at the surface short and sweet because they um whoever's on the on the listening end is going to want to get it the, the gist of who you are and uh brevity is the soul of wit Okay. Um, the, uh, on the on the surface level, right. symphony auditions are no different. Yeah, uh, there's there's a reason when you go in, for example, symphony audition, they don't want to hear. The, well, they'll, they'll ask for um, a fast orchestral excerpt, a slow orchestral excerpt, your various scales, and then of course a, an excerpt of a, a solo concerto or a or a performance piece. They don't want to hear the whole thing. They don't, right. a, they don't have time to. Right. They just yeah, want an excerpt business, from you know, it. Just exactly, your yeah, favorite. We just piece. need to hear. Yeah. So you, you want you want to put up your best, but um, yeah. When when why um. Why wow your audience over 10 minutes when you can wow them in, in 30 seconds? True. Yeah. But then, uh, um, and of course, as, as we mentioned so regularly, uh, you've got to keep them wanting more. You, have, you, you, can't, you can't conclude and let them be, that's all I have. <laughs> yeah, <you> know, <laughs> all right, we're done. Go, you want them to be sitting there going, but love it, love, and then go, hmm, what's, what else? What else? You want, you want them intrigued. 
get them to leave them wanting more, as yes, they say. Exactly. And then yeah. dur- during, <clears throat> so for an audition, and we we never want to like naysay anyone, like don't don't do this. But if you if someone wanted to audition, what instruments in in your experience over the last eleven years have worked the best, and what instruments have been like eh, maybe that wasn't a good idea. There's never been an instrument that I have seen that hasn't had things to contribute and add. Oh, nice. There have been unusual ones. I, 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 that's, that's certainly fair to say. And I only say unusual now, but unusual is still is not a negative thing. Frankly, no, that's is a wonderful thing. The, the only ones that, that and I say it, I like them very much. I frankly, I would love to see them back, but I haven't seen them. Bef- I hadn't seen anything like that. It actually was my first year. It was two tuba players. That that okay. was yeah yeah we haven't, seen that, we haven't uh, yeah. seen that since tuba um, players. I know I'm tuba trying tuba to picture it. Yeah. Like I liked them a lot. They 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 were fun and they they had an advantage. A they had a beautiful sound. They had a nice they had a nice character. They're loud. Set. Yeah, they carry loud. They yeah, carry. You, you I mean, want to sum it up in one word: big, loud. Yeah, that goes a long way. Yeah. A they were wonderful musicians. They were fun. We loved having them. Um, and uh, it I would was, pay those guys unique. to follow Keith around going bum 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 See, just I didn't want to make that bum, joke, bum, but maybe bum, I'm just bum, politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very politically correct person, and I just think it'd be hilarious. I mean, he would probably pay them to do something stupid back to me or get somebody oh, totally. else. That's, <laughs> the only, um, of course, we have to remember the piano so sadly didn't exist in Elizabethan England. Right. I, I wish we could have pianists. Uh, a, not practical, heavy, you can about imagine right. why. But yeah. let's face it, the piano is the easiest instrument for scoring someone in that very sure. same sense. And that's part of that's a big part of what I do. Um, it's probably one of my single most favorite things to to it's it's teasing any patron and, and, and or or and cast, etc. But it's teasing any given person in a way that's going to make them feel good about themselves and going to make them laugh. Yeah. That makes me feel really good. Yeah, no, it's it, the it, best you know, part of my day. Currently I'm I'm in sales and but even when I was on the radio, it was, you know, leave them leave them laughing. You know, yeah. make them laugh and you've won them over. Oh yeah, that's the, the greatest a, a, a thing in the compliment world. Compliment in the form of a of a joke or an insult is gold. Oh yeah, that all the time, and um, and I I also look out for people who, who may not get a whole lot of compliments, and 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 there's they, they get they get this look in their eye when they have been complimented in a, in a cute and, and perhaps slightly silly way, but they you can tell they they feel the compliment. And they feel good about themselves, and helping someone feel good good about themselves and laughing at the same time is, is possibly one of the single best sensations that that, a, that an entertainer can feel. Let's um, let's dive into that because uh, we'll about examples. Y- well, <laughs> you, you, yeah, you have some. I mean, and away we go. <laughs> you have you have left. Uh, you know, at least on my family, you have left a really huge mark. Um, because and. and this is the beauty of it. Like like we were talking about earlier, fanboying boying out a little bit, you know. Um, we've gone for years, and she wanted to see you. She learned how to play the violin because of you. Um, but it always cracks me up because it, it's like you we we've had this conversation at the campground after hours that you know, like you 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 are your aim is that that's what you're wanting to do. Um, and the greatest compliment to me is when somebody is so inspired by what you do that they want to do it as well. That is, to me, the greatest compliment that anyone could possibly pay you. It certainly was for me. And I so appreciate that. What really, what really blows me away is that that uh, that little thing that we did last year, the melodies unveiled, where you know it was it was kind of an ad hoc type of thing because I was like. From minute one, I was like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I didn't get clearance until like almost, a, I think it was two weeks before when I finally sent you the sheet music. And I was like, hey, man, this is what we're going to we're going to do. Do you want to join this? And you were like, yeah, cool. Um, and then it had such an enormous impact, not just for for me, but, you know, I'm going to cue this video so that we can. And if you can hear it in the background, you know, you <laughs> my child. child. <laughs> so this is the clip of, of our performance. This was the first one, and I think this was the the more emotional one. It was. The second one was good. This one. The right. second one was raw. good, but this one was raw. There's there, there is there's value in not practicing yes. something in certain senses because what uh, the organic, the natural, is always more entertaining. Yes, absolutely. You there? Come on. 
There I am, a Yen Shang, the demanding. And I, I really feel bad for, for uh, Star, who, who held the music, because she was fighting tears the entire time. I heard that after the performance, she had to excuse herself to the green room because she was so moved by this. Yeah. And, you know, Keith got dust in his eye. Uh, I, yeah, there was dust. It was windy that day, I believe. On the camera is my, my older daughter. You see, you don't even teach her properly. The, the banter, the improv that we had was just, I, I thought it was spot on. And you can hear people in the background like, oh, wow, this is neat. You know, the hardest part about that scene was standing half on my ankles and half on my knees. Yeah, right. I, I was going to say that. It was a breeze, except for that. So I'm going, dying, dying, look the part, keep it up. Right. <laughs> Other than that. Slow, slowly dying inside. Yeah, it's... It's awesome the way that you guys harmonized. And basically, correct me if I'm wrong, you did this on the spot. Like you, I mean, I gave you the, the music, but it was like, okay, you know, we don't have time to actually practice. Uh, and you guys, you, you kind of harmonized with her on the spot. It was, it was gorgeous. There's, there's a golden zone. When you look at something, let, let's say a jazz tune, for example, because of course all the jazz all about improv, when you look at something for the first time, there, there, there's, a, there's a golden zone where you don't know it very well yet. That's your golden zone to collect as many ideas as possible. Right. Because once you know it, you're sort of stuck in what you know. Yeah, so this video is actually up on, and you can see the link on there. It's This is uh, on, on the Tiny Violinist's uh, YouTube page, uh, Aish on Violin, A-I-S-O-N Violin uh, on YouTube. She, uh, we're going to get more content for her. She's only got a few videos up there, but we're going to get her doing some fun stuff. She may be doing her practicing uh, live. Oh, and our so. biggest goal is is to make every single patron is to take them into and make them actually think, even for a few moments, that they're actually they are actually in right. Elizabethan England. And um, I, I'm very confident that we do that on a regular basis with lots of people. Absolutely. But th there is there is quite the magic too when I actually feel that myself, and when I can when I can earn that moment. Yeah. At least once a day, it feels really good because it's. It, it's classic, isn't it? You, you, it takes you out of the, the, the life's worries, and it takes you out of the sometimes the impending doom that a lot of life feels like these days. And it, it helps you realize that adults, we don't get enough pretending in our lives. We don't get enough fantasy and imagination. That's why I'm such a big, I don't play myself uh, yet. <laughs> um, my boyfriend is a big advocate. Um, but uh, that's why I'm such a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons, because it's getting adults pretending again. Well, it's, it, imagination is the key to innovation. You know, you have to create. And, and what we do on the streets th through improv, through music, is we're being creative and we're, we're breaking out. And the great thing is, is that, you know, I, I, this one here, um, we've had this conversation multiple times where it's like, you know, uh, my friends make fun of me because I like this hobby, because I like this. And I'm like, just look at him smile and say, for God's sakes, my dad pretends that he's a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's 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 the coolest thing. So here's the piece that 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 I think this is really what hit me. Um this hit me the hardest because it, it it's and it always brings it always makes my eyes water when I think about this, but we're talking about leaving that impact and this this is so funny to me because during this speech, this exchange that we, we were talking, um, I, I tell the story about how, you know, nine years ago, she was a wee babe in a stroller. And for 30 minutes, you played for her. And all I could give you was 10 bucks. And dude, like that 10 bucks to you, probably, I, I don't know. But to me, that was all that I had that I could give. And I was like, I, I'm sorry. And I, I gave it and you smiled and continued to play. And I was like, cool. At least he's not a dick. Um, and then years later, as I started, you know, after I retired and I made more, I slipped a lot of money in your basket. And I think it's hilarious because nobody ever realizes that, you know, the, the, the $10 or the hundred dollars, 
it doesn't matter. It's the appreciation. You know, um, we stopped because it's it's awesome. And now that I'm on cast, Keith and I make it a point to stop whenever we cross paths with with a musician. Yes. And we position ourselves in a way that we're basically blocking the lane without blocking the lane. We are sure appreciate that. pushing attention to you guys because that's important. Yeah. You know, that that's amazing. Getting someone's attention and holding it, that I wouldn't say that's an easy skill to that that, that doesn't come naturally to a lot of people. Well, no, um, and it's especially not for you guys, because you're uh, well for you, I mean you're playing, you can't go, hey, <laughs> hey, come over here. Dude, you, and, I, and, yet, and yet you're, you're right, yeah, and yet you invent ways to. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because you have to be, you have to be creative. the schooling in music that I got between CSU and UNC and, and all sorts of amazing people that I work with, um, I can't I I can't speak of a, any specific moment that spoke to um, attention grabbing. Um, there's a there, there's a certain violinist on YouTube. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and not say her name, but um, she definitely has a reputation for being extremely uh, showy and flamboyant and all these things, and that's and that's terrific. Um, um, in, in in the classical realm and in, in some of the realms. Uh, not a lot of us are terribly thrilled with how someone who is perhaps not all that fine of a musician, but but gets away, but built has built such an enormous fan base based on just on showmanship. Showmanship. I know exactly and what you're talking about. Again, yeah. I'd rather not say her name, but uh, but um, I I do owe um, I do owe her at the same time um, a. A, a nod, reason, a, a nod, um, yeah. In in how many people she's inspired, and I sure. can't tell you the number of folks who have come to me and said, "Oh, I, oh, I, I love, I want to be like her," and all I can say is, "Then let's get to work." I uh, my my response to to something like that because I we there are so many because of of that performer that have emerged um, that I, it, it's awesome to me because before that. You really didn't hear about it. And, and you know, it's, it's it, the, the instrument existed, the performances existed, but the performances have increased immensely in the public eye. Yeah. And I think that it's, it's awesome because, as we said before, our whole goal is to inspire the youth to get outside of the house, to get away from and and to unplug to learn something that they'll be able to use later on she hadn't really talked that much um but what do you think like like your inspirations and your performance at the renaissance festival with royston what what was your thoughts about it how did you feel um honestly that was like the first time i like performed in public so i was kind of nervous but uh, like at that time because like it was just like spot on mm -hmm. um but i did actually like it just sparked on me so like i it just like clicked i need to start doing this more i gotta stop like staying inside and being depressed yeah um and just go touch some grass <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like it no it's awesome and the cool thing is um I really haven't told people this because, you know, I, I want her to be able to, to, to have her own voice. But aren't you writing your own music now? Yes, I am. Excellent. Very nice. Excellent. You're you're starting your very first piece, right? And your your tutor is actually helping you. So that's I mean, that was that was Miss Vina that um, did the costumes on a budget. Yes. yes. Uh, so uh, you know, it, but we we constantly have these conversations about like what how do we get kids involved in things? How do we get them away from? And well, you got to give them something to do. Yeah. You can't see, just say, Hey, go outside. Like, dude, give them something to do. And see, that's kind of important for me in, in why I like to, you know, mentor or teach. Yes. Or, you know, especially inspire because here's the thing. And I, I look at from, I look at a very, I, I don't know what word you want to call it, but, Everyone in this room, <laughs> all three of us here, are going to get to a point where we can't do this anymore. Right. But if we want that love of what we do to carry on, we have to have that next generation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and if we don't, then an art form is going to pass away. You know, mine is acting, yours is music. But if you don't get the that next generation, you know, like Aislinn, 
to, to go, oh, I love doing this and carry on that torch that you lit for them. Yeah. It goes away. You know, and, and that would be sad. You know what's really difficult, though, is being a dad that doesn't play an instrument. I sing. I used to play guitar years ago. Like, I don't know. I think I was her age. And I don't play anymore. I'd love to, but I just don't have time. I, I'm so busy. But it's hard for me as a parent to say, okay, kid, make sure that you practice. Make sure that you do this. And it's like, no. I, 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 so I've been attacking it from the, the perspective of, I want you to do this not for me, but for you. Because I'm trying to set you up for a future where you're going to have opportunities Yes, you know? we're, we're taking culture and we're taking it, we're, exactly, it's just like you said, we're continuing, we're allowing it to continue. Um, ben Zander, who's the conductor of, I'm going to say, I believe, the Boston Phil, not the Boston Pops, the Boston Philharmonic, um, he's incredible, and, and, and I got to listen to him speak. He he was talking about just this translating specifically classical music, but frankly just music in general in terms of the culture to, to the next generation. He used the classic, um, the classic allegory that, of the two salesmen who, like perhaps back in the the teens or the twenties, go back to go, to go to Africa to see if there's an opportunity for selling shoes. And one telegrams this is the twenties. One telegrams back and says situation hopeless. They don't wear shoes. The other one telegrams back and says wonderful sales opportunity. They don't have any shoes yet. <laughs> <laughs> it is perspective. It, it is. is. Perspective, very much, and 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 so many. He furthers in in, in that um, in uh, there's this there's this very disheartening trend, a sort of school of thought that um, oh, and orchestras are dying, and we worry that we worry about this, you know, this mu- this wonderful thing that is music in particular, and that it's 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 changing and it's dying. But the rest of us just go, you ain't seen nothing yet. No, absolutely right. I mean, uh, the Book of Barnabas actually has a great quote. Uh, as far as uh, music is concerned. And this one, I'm going to do it, dude. You're going to do it? I'm going to do it. Great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote. Uh, this is uh, from the East, uh, a great man known as Confucius. If one should desire to know whether a kingdom is well-governed, if its morals are good or bad, the quality of its music will furnish the answer. It is, that's a very strong statement because... Without music, you really have nothing. It's boring. It's life is, I mean, dude, imagine being on a ship and not being able to whistle because it's bad luck, but there's no musicians. Yeah. Then what? This is rum. There, <laughs> there is rum. There's rum. <laughs> That's true. There's rum. <laughs> so, Ashland, do, you, do you know who John Williams is? He's a composer. She's not, she's not um, gotten to the. Okay. The music histories they, yet? They don't teach us about No. Okay. She's, she's not just there curious, yet. Curious. I can guarantee you've heard his music before um, if you have seen <laughs> Star Wars. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't uh, want to give away the answer. Park. I'm like, I know this <laughs> one. I know this one. Just to name a few. <laughs> um, now, John Williams, he actually recently turned, I believe he just turned 93. 90? 93-ish. Yes, so, He's yeah. old. I remember when he, yep, he sure is. And... Um, and, and so he's been composing for the last 80 or so years. That would make um, him 10 when he start, first yeah, started composing. That's, that's what he said. Uh-huh. So, and, and uh, I heard him interviewed, uh, well, actually when he turned 90, but I'm sure he's reiterated the statement. Um, he said even in his 90s, he still composes every single day. And remember, not every not every one is going to be the Star Wars theme or Jurassic Park theme. But, um, he, and I want you to keep this in mind too, uh, in that your brain, just like any other muscle in your body, is a muscle, and if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So yes. you say you're composing now, never stop. Just I know some going. good examples of those those type of people. Yeah, did, Indiana did, Jones. Yeah, like did he do Jaws? Yep. Did yeah. Well, I, 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 I saw, ah. lost in space. She, hold it, hold it. she figured out. I, I self taught myself. Jaws. Yeah. I figured it out just Excellent. by myself. Excellent. Which, you know, that was a skill that, that actually Royston had told you was, was something very important to learn. That's right. Yes. Did, did you remember this? Um, when, when your dad asked me... Hoist the colors. Yeah, hoist the colors. Um, as often as the case, it's, it, 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 it falls into... When, when I get a request, which I love so much, but when I get a request, it falls into the category of don't know, never heard of. Okay. You know, I'm not going to have to know everything. Or maybe I've heard of don't know it very well or perhaps 
I know it very well and can play it. But the, the majority of the time, it's in that middle category of, ooh, I certainly know it, but I've never actually played it before. And um, and I, I and your dad can attest to this that when I, I played it for him, I told him after the fact that I hadn't played it before, and it just about blew his mind. Oh yeah. But but that's the <laughs> the, the value and the beauty of music in in that um, it when it's uh, when when your ear when your ear knows it when your brain knows it translating that into your instrument is the easy part. Um, and you're you're going to discover that on probably many many occasions. I'm sure you have already. You will continue to. It's it's a, it's a remarkable thing. I I I wouldn't. Have, I th understanding humans as I do, I wouldn't have guessed that was the case. But having done, having having proven that so many times, and not just me, it does boggle my mind. But that is that is a guarantee that when your system knows it, translating it to your instrument is quite simple by comparison. Yeah, I got myself in trouble with that. Yes. Oh, she do did. tell. Um, because uh, we uh, like at school we went uh, we went to strings, and this was like like two years ago. So when I first started it, when we got into, like, strings and everything, I was, like, the bestest one there. And, like, everyone was, like, crowding me for, like, certain songs and everything. And I was, like, I know the song. So I feel like doing it. And the thing is, I, I, I was making it, like, a type of, like, joke type of thing. And the thing that I did with it was that, um... <laughs> My teacher was walking down the aisles of like the like strings, and I was playing jazz. And every time she stopped, I would make it quieter. And then when she started moving again, <laughs> you got a troll. That is awesome. <laughs> she got she got yelled at, and then I got a phone call. What? I got a phone call. Oh, never be ashamed of playing. Music. Oh no, it was it was hilarious. And she's a good sport. Her her teacher is a really good sport about it. She was like, uh, if you could just teach her to um, try to stay on task with what we're doing and encourage her to do that, that would be awesome. I love that she learned this. But and it's, time and a place for everything. Yeah, know no, your audience. Know your audience. Like, <laughs> the cliches. Yes, we, we course, say that a lot. They're, they're, they're for a reason. Yes, we know do. your audience. We time do. and a place it, for everything. Of course, it's but hilarious. The, but the spirit though. being there, that's very exciting. That's it's very it's exciting hilarious though because. <laughs> You know, she just came home and she was all bouncy. She's like, Dad, Dad, guess what I did? And I'm like, what? And she goes, I figured out how to play Jaws. I'm like, and me being who I am, I'm like, oh, yeah, show me. And so she did it. Indeed. And then the very next day, she comes home and goes, Dad, I got in trouble. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> and then she tells me and I'm like, I'm not even mad at you. That's funny. That's awesome. It's it's hilarious. We're laughing for 30 minutes straight. Yeah, that's. But it's it's really cool because... Like with people like you that inspire. Um, what do you mean, that, people like you? Well, he's a musician. Oh, that's okay. Okay, Sorry, let me yeah. hold on. Let me let me let me be more politically correct. When musicians like yourself uh, yeah. uh, inspire people, it's it's gramma grammar. Okay, uh, <laughs> inspire people to pick up a less, uh, a, an, an instrument or something like that. It's it's really important uh, if you want to get over the hump. I mean, yeah, there's YouTube Academy. Uh, everybody can learn how to do whatever um, on YouTube, but it does not. It does not, in my opinion, trump private lessons because no. you you having somebody in person is a lot easier. But this one is a is a progeny prodigy of um, online lessons. So she had a private tutor that, uh, and and I'm a dick. I'm, I'm a dick. We got her violin two days before I shipped her down to Arizona to go step in time with grandma and grandpa. Nice. Oh, yeah, dude, it was great. Oh, I, 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 I got over the hump of having to his, listen to the screeching. Uh, he was pissed. Uh, but she had uh, online lessons with somebody back here in the spring, so she was on, on Zoom calls and everything which was really difficult, but for her to be able to get to where she's at now with that. And we've, we've transitioned from one tutor to another, and now she has a literal village behind her. Uh, because I know everybody at, the, at CRF is like, dude, that's my little sister. Dude, that's my prodigy. That's my protege. That's my student. You know, And we try to uh, facilitate as many opportunities for her to um, meet with people from the festival uh, and just kind of touch back. I think we've had what, like six or seven get-togethers at my place. Something like that, yeah. Where we've yeah. had people that are local. Not a lot of people from Denver, and surely not where you're at. 
Because you're, what, Wyoming, right? Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost, yes. Well, I mean, I, I can get to Cheyenne faster than I can get to Denver. <laughs> oh, wow. That's right. brutal. Livermore. That is yeah. brutal. It's, it is the Wild West up there. It's beautiful. It's very serene. and Yeah. yeah that's what it so takes. other so, than dealing with with you know doing what we did uh is there any other moments during the festival your t- your tenure at the festival that really like stick out in your mind too many to count undoubtedly but i <laughs> but i can i can give you a few but this yeah. is story time yeah so, it's story wow, time course, we, you know. we want stories do tell well and i was reminded of this quote earlier i think about it probably just about every single day it's um sir terry pratchett who's uh, the anniversary of his uh, knighthood was actually just a couple days ago he oh, was that's cool. back in 2009 i think yeah. huzzah huzzah um, Sir Terry of his, of, of his many <laughs> beautiful insights about, about theater and life and, 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 and the important things in life in general. The one that very much stands out to me is that uh, people will probably not remember what you said, um, what you looked like outside of maybe what color you were wearing, things like that. But they will remember what you made them feel yes. and how you made them feel. Yes. And that's how I, I believe that's a big facet of how I try to live my life. Um, and, and, and how this reflects to me, again, everything from your interactions, one that I, I, I would say I come across this several times of year, and it's, it's the, the best part of a day and oftentimes the best part of a weekend. Um, one, one example, um, a, a gal comes up to me last, last season and said, um, would you, she said, oh, I, I, we, we see you every year. We love hearing you. Oh, thank you, of course. And I, was, I, I love speaking to her. And she said, I would love if you would play the Shokan Farewell. I said certainly I would, I would be I would be happy to because playing something that someone wants a that just feels good by itself but I so I I, I played it I, I took my time every single moment was was very in the moment and uh, we were we were feeling the same emotions at the same time it was very 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 wonderful and and uh, and then then I finished and then she said um she said while she was thanking me she said my father had um asked that of you maybe a couple years ago and it's something we like to play together and he's he's no longer here oh but when you when you played that he was that's see that's awesome that's a moment man yeah that is that is a beautiful moment thanks for sharing that man yeah dude you're gonna take that like with you forever yeah like yeah you don't forget moments like that no i i I mean Keith yeah, you know, and I have impacted people. Yeah, I, 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 similar reactions when I when I play at memorial services and funerals, things like that. Yeah. I oftentimes people will say, they said I knew I was going to have a hard time getting through this. There's no no not getting around that. And they said, but what you were able to provide helped it make it less miserable for me. You know, you, you mentioned funerary services and memorials and stuff like that. Uh, last year, the very last weekend, uh, we we at the gate sang sang parting glass, um, and I lost it, dude. Like this one was standing next to me, and she's like, "Why is Daddy crying?" I mean, like, dude, my 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 eyes were just pouring, um, because in my head, I I envision I envisioned that one as a funerary song, and I was keyed in on your playing, and it was just, it just moved me so much that I was I was in tears, and I could not stop, and I'm like, I'm on I'm I'm on stage, and I can't stop, and I'm like, okay. Let me stop and try to breathe. And I just couldn't do it. And then I couldn't get it back together. And I was just like, what? What am I doing? And I was so raw from the experience of performing with Keith and performing with uh, people like like yourself uh, and, and Amanda and just being involved in that whole thing. And it was so awesome because I realized, yeah, you're right. 100% you're right. If we can make people feel one thing when we walk away just and what something. we feel the same thing something the same yeah. thing at and the same share time. that emotion with them it's the utmost of what humanity is yes yes to to bear your soul to someone else and say i recognize you as a human being that to me is glorious it's beautiful um thanks for sharing that man that that's Thank just you. where else do you perform other than um you know the the colorado renaissance festival I, Anything coming up? 
Well, um, one of the most regular places that you would you would see me in, in uh, performance context would be at the various, uh, it's the FOTD, Friends of Traditional Dance. Please check out their website, FOTD.org, for upcoming dances. The 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 broad, we do, we do multiple types of, of, of group and community dancing, but one of the most common ones that, I, that I'm booked for somewhat regularly are called contra dances. So if you're not familiar with contra dancing, it's very similar to square dancing, uh, oh. dosi dos, attaches, uh, alamans, things like that. That's pretty much the same, same cores. Square dances are just specifically literally in squares, but it's, yeah. it's the same thing. You typically, you choose a primary partner and then you typically dance with just about everyone in the room. That's the goal. It's, it's wonderful. It's a kind of, I think of it as square Speed dancing. Speed dating. A little more innocent. <laughs> sometimes, yeah, sometimes it can be. Yep. I need to say, let me know what that is. I got to take Keith. Yes. <laughs> oh, please do. Please do. It, it's fun. It's fun. Um, uh, our, our, uh, our most veteran uh, silver-haired folks up uh, in the contra dances insist that's why they are that limber in their 80s and 90s. Definitely need to take it's Keith. Got fun. it. Going. It's fun. It's energetic. And uh, uh, it's 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 all levels always welcome. That's awesome. Um, yeah. The, so, so typical contra dance night will be like seven to ten, something along those lines. There's usually either a um, a family dance beforehand for for small folks, um, or people that are new to the dances. There's there's always a lesson beforehand if people that are unfamiliar with the, the dance steps. So that's all gone through, um, and then every and then usually we'll we'll have about twelve or thirteen sometimes full full contra dances and one run of a fiddle tune. A thirty two bar fiddle tune is one run of the dance. Okay. So. Um, so typically, I'll choose maybe three. It's usually three tunes and play them maybe five, five, six, something along those lines. Um, uh, and the, the tempo is it's consistent, important, and then the dance caller will um, they'll they'll usually walk. They'll they usually call the steps as they're happening. Once they've gone through it a few times, they'll just they'll just be quiet and let people continue their dancing. So, um, and then a dance a contra dance band can take just about any form you can possibly think of. The most most regular go tos are fiddle, piano, guitar, fiddle, piano, clarinet, um, accordion, fiddle, things. Like that, I love it. I love any and all groups that I've gotten to play with. Um, so, and then, um, so up in Fort Collins, we have the we dance in the basement of the Mason Hall there, and that's a great dance space. If you're familiar with the Avalon Ballroom in Boulder, um, that's also a regular go-to there as well. I would say that's one of the, the rare spots that we hold. They're called Zesty Dances. It's still a contra dance, and as all, everyone is welcome, but they are geared more towards intermediate to advanced dancers. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's called a Zesty. Other than that, it's everyone is always welcome to any any level of dance, um, provided you can keep up. <laughs> and you, um, did right. men- you did mention earlier that you, it's, you, it's invigorating. you are still part of symphonies and, and and stuff like that. Yes, right. Yes. So, um, and in and in small performances, the um, out, outside of outside of contra dancing and um, perhaps occasionally perhaps sitting in with Fort Collins Symphony or pre, or, or like uh, the uh, um, Larimer County's Health and Wellness Orchestra, Longmont Symphony uh, groups like that. Um, the uh, out, outside of those groups, um, the, the majority of performing I do is with my own students for their own recitals. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. In fact, we actually we've got a couple of those coming up there as well because it's important to have our studio group lessons and group recitals, which we do, and those are always very fun. Um, and then additionally, um, uh, and then uh, the solo and individual recital is also very important. And then more recently, and this, this, is a, this is a group we formed just recently, but we're, we're already having some fun and some successes, and, and it's, it's a, uh, we're open to, uh, to just about any event, of course, but primarily weddings, and that is the Northern Fellows uh, String Ensemble. So it's it's all literally fellows, and that was that was the joke because we're all from UNC. So um, so we formed a group there for we we want the the theme of the group to be of course you know all your classics in terms of standard wedding music and exciting um, all, all sorts of bonusy things as well. But the big feature is for uh, easily recon- high you know wonderful arrangements but easily recognizable things. So the very first thing that we played was the introduction to the Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and at a wedding. Yeah. In fact, actually, we've got one coming up. Um, That's uh, awesome. funny. We've got, we've got one coming up there. Uh, that and is these awesome. folks want some. Z- and oh, and we have uh, Legend of Zelda. The list goes on and on and right. on. Legend of Zelda, Howl's Moving Castle, um, th- uh, Disney themes, all sorts of stuff. Because when it comes down to it, if I, and if finding the music, that's the easy part. Then I get to sit up in my room and geek out while I'm arranging things from sure. a piano score. Sure. It's very entertaining. Then we get to play it through and we go, well, how fun is that? Yeah. Then we'll have a pianist come and join us. And we're always open to having, having guests and things like that so any and all genres but things that and I, and I learned that idea from fair and that the I, I can play through a million fiddle tunes that are that I love and that are very very fun and invigorating and dancey but uh, they're, let's face it they're, they're very esoteric right. not not just any person's gonna go oh that's silver spear by this carol no no one's gonna know that but but they're gonna um, know what they feel when they hear it right mm-hmm. yeah 
Yep, but but they will recognize. Um, but what will again? What will get the attention? You you mentioned you know I, I can't say hey you pay attention. Yeah. yeah but um. Da, 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 dee. Well, yeah, <laughs> there you go. The head hey. turners. Well, that's kind of. Yeah. I know that oh, yeah. one. You know, kind of like at, at the opening gate scene. Um, you know, you've got uh, the the Crimson Pirates, and yeah. they do they their do their mermaid version. Yes. But at the very end of it, they they transition into Under the Sea. Yeah. And it always like if you if you don't if you haven't seen it before, pay attention because it. Like all the people in the crowd just kind of go like, "Wait, what? What are they? Are they really doing?" Oh, yeah. And then they it, start, and everybody's like, and I, don't know, Yay. I, "I don't know if you ever noticed they throw in the the Gilligan's Island, uh, they oh, throw a Gilligan's right. Island thing in oh, there too." I, I caught it. It took that me a couple weeks to several think, generations. Yeah, that's clever. It, it, it took that's me. Brilliant. It took me a couple weeks to get. I went, Wait, that's Gilligan's Island. <laughs> they, they, but but they, they just also, sneak it, they just sneak it right in there. It's super you cool. You can't forget music, can you? Yeah, it's, no, it's amazing. No. You physically can't. It's it's funny because in my my the way that I remember things, there's two things that, that there's two methods. One, where was I when this happened? Two, you know, oh, I remember this song playing in the background. Yeah. Or you know some kind of, of of musical thing that's there, and and again, I don't really play a musical instrument. You know, th- this is my musical instrument. My singing is my musical instrument. Which this last year for me has been revelations because it's like um, I can actually stop crowds with my my singing. It, it I we we did it at Santa Fe. It was the craziest. You need to make sure that you come with us this year. Yes. Um, but it was it was crazy because it was an ad hoc performance. Uh, two of them actually. Uh, the first one we were walking around with a, a book that I had written out uh, some songs in. Keith and I re- managed to uh, meet up by the mermaids, and we found Amanda and we sang uh, Mingle Bay. Mingle, yeah. Uh, and uh, the Mingle boat song, and then um, later Keith had left me because he's Rufus the Bone Fairy, and I'm still Captain Yen <laughs> Shang. So I'm running around with the Pirates of Neverland, and I was trying to introduce um, Amanda to these pirates who are new cast members. They had never performed on the cast before. So I was trying to introduce them. Well, they weren't listening. So they were talking amongst themselves, and Amanda made the offhanded comment of, you know, well, Captain, it looks like nobody's listening to you. I said, no, 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 I know how to get their attention. So I bellowed at the top of my lungs, hoist the colors, and it echoed. They responded. Then it echoed down the the laneway, and it came all the way back. And I was like, dude, that was kind of neat. And so Amanda goes, I guess we have to sing. And I said, I guess we do. So we started singing again, and people started gathering around. And I was like, dude, this is, I I looked around. I was like, this is freaking cool. And afterwards, it 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 ended on a comedic bit because our our mermaids down there are sirens. Yeah. So you know, she's like uh, one of the ladies in the uh, one of the mermaids in the, the tank said, "Well, that was a beautiful song. Thank you for singing. Now, which one of you is going to be my lunch?" Um, being the true captain that I am, I threw somebody in the way and I said, "This guy," and took <laughs> off running. <laughs> but it, it's it's awesome because you you look at like how how well music can inspire and how well music can add to the ambiance and even change the tune of a venue because of what you're doing. Yes. So have you ever seen, um, please pull this up. Um, and everyone, please, please pull this up. It's a fascinating example of this exact concept. It's on YouTube. Just pull up, um, star Wars throne room scene. No music. Okay, let me let they, me. They walk up and get their medals and you know all that all that stuff. Oh, I think I've seen this before. It's it's hilarious to start with, but it's truly spooky. It's truly Star fascinating. Wars. Uh, the throne room scene, no music. It, it, it will help you understand. Speaking of John Williams, it'll it'll help you understand <laughs> the monumental impact that music can have on, on frankly, an otherwise pretty boring scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it turns us. Yeah. It, it, we're gonna we're gonna do something really weird here, guys. You're gonna have to please uh, pardon me as I. Uh, That's what we do here at the show. Well, this is what happens. We do know? weird things. No, that's not it. That's the, no. That's the music. It, it, it'll it'll be the actual. Uh, there it is. Right that there. one. Yeah. Little preamble for you though. <laughs> okay. Get in here. 
this is. It's not gonna let me do that right now. Hold on. There it is. There it is. Now let's turn the volume up. <laughs> well, there, there is no volume because there's nothing going on. I mean, there, there, there are sound effects. <laughs> yeah. It's uncomfortable to watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> coughing in the background. <laughs> Also reminds me of you know, we all remember that scene in Jurassic Park where we see the dinosaurs for the first time. Yeah, and we hear that yeah. music. We can all remember that feeling. Oh, we absolutely! Exactly yeah. that moment. Yeah, same concept. <laughs> didn't didn't they do this with? Uh, I, I I know I've seen this concept. Before. <laughs> hey, it's Keith. How'd you get on Star Wars? So yeah, that's I, that, that is, that's actually unnerving. I've seen that. I mean, same it, really, yeah, it really it, is. It makes quite the impressive difference. I've seen that same concept with um, with horror movies. Where they strip the score out oh, from underneath sure. the horror movies. Yeah. Where you look at it, and it's like imagine like uh, what's an iconic one that Shining, uh, uh, the, Shining. the or, Shining, or or, yeah. or you know Halloween, Halloween or Jason. You know where you hear the, the, the with Jason, it, dun, 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 you know the, the piano. If you took that away, it's just some dude walking through the woods. Yeah. It's literally yeah. just some dude walking through the woods, and you're just like, this isn't scary. I saw a recut of The Shining. They done just that. They they, they took uh, yeah they took The Shining they, and they put in cute kind of family heartwarming music and they and they revamped it to where it was kind of a a, a light a light fan, cute family movie. I've I've Shining. seen that, but it's they great. did it with it's the like, Muppets. Oh. Ah! They did it with the Muppets score, and I thought it was the most mm -hmm. funny thing in the world because I'm like, oh, yeah. this is not funny because when they when when uh, when Nicholson breaks through the the door. And, and it, it's it's literally da, 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 you know da, ba, 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 and then you, you just see Nicholson burst through the door and it's like ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba. well I know what I'm going home to watch no dude it's so funny I've man yeah. I've got oh, to see I love it. that it's hilarious oh. but uh, you know it, you're right you know music sets tone sets mm -hmm. mood sets pace sets yeah. timing you know did you know who which um, which um, composition that Kubrick references in the opening scene the boom 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 no bom, which one bom. is that that's um that's from the symphony fantastique by Hector Berlioz it's the it's the final movement it's incredible symphony I heard just a couple of days ago actually that that specific moment of it's actually a rare five movement symphony we don't see that all the time but it's the middle of that movement towards the finale it's the um uh The, the, um, the, the, oh, there it is. It's, it's the witch's Sabbath scene. So those, 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 the bells, those that's are hell's bells. Yeah. That we talk mm -hmm. about. And the horns, yes. the, the, that epic line. That's very, very <laughs> iconic. Um, yep. So that's what he used. And I think most people recognize it from that. But the whole symphony is, is extraordinary. Um, yeah. No, I think, I think movie, movie scores, movie music is, is fantastic because it, it, it that's what relates all the emotions, you yeah. know, that le the when you said that the Jurassic Park one was super cool. Because I remember sitting in the theater and, you know, they do the, oh, and she stands up and she's like, Some turns his head. Off, yeah. And all of a sudden that music swells up and you see the dinosaurs. And I'm like, ah, I geeked out. You know, I'm like, this is so super cool, you know. And it speaks to the quality of their acting, too, because they were just green screening it. Of course. Yeah. yeah it's like, yeah. wow, that, that, it's hard to believe they weren't actually there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, if, you know this was funny. Just I think it was just yesterday. Actually, I saw the post on Facebook. Uh, name your if if uh, if a, a musical theme played when you came into a room, what would it be? Ooh. I enjoy I enjoyed reading through the answers. Ooh. They were very fun. Ooh, wait, no, no, no. Before you do that, um, let, let's do that for each other. Oh, 
Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. So, so take should a, each take the person to our left, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what? What? Well, ladies first. We'll let you start. What song do you think of when you hear or when you see me walking into a room? Anything? Any genre? Any, no, no, no. Don't play it. Just, just say what it is. Jaws. It, Jaws. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could see that. Um, it, it, it's funny because um, is that like when you're eating ice cream at two a.m.? He's like, okay, maybe I won't come down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm doing something naughty. Dun, dun. <laughs> Dad's coming around the corner. I know it. Dun, dun. <laughs> You know, um, it, it, it's, this is going to sound cheesy, uh, but every time I see Keith, uh, <laughs> the, the song, the, the, and it's, it's not a classical song, but the song that comes into my head is... On the day I was born, little bass as well. Got around. George Thorogood, man. That's that's what comes out. It, but it's your voice, and that's what. It, it. You know what's really messed up is when you're actually in cadence, when you're actually on the, you know, in the streets doing it, and I can hear it, and I hear it, and I see you, and and make it even funnier. You're interacting with a little girl that's dressed as a princess, and all I hear is. It's all about the children. <laughs> when you come to town, you bring your kids around. Nice. <laughs> yeah. What have we got so, for so if I had to pick one for Royston. Dancing um, Queen? It, well, <laughs> that's just, that is so just. <laughs> on point? Look, that, okay, that's profiling, and that's wrong. And it's okay. on point. And it's totally true. <laughs> but no, no, I, I, I hear, I hear, and, and God, I hope I say the name right, but it's it's Canon and D. Okay. You, you know the one? Yeah. Ooh, I, I just, the Pop Bell. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, because yeah. I, I can see, I can literally see you playing it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, mean, rehe- so. I rehearsed that last night, actually. Did you? Yeah, there you go. Oh, Boom, sure. nailed it. The, if, if we were to say a classic, <laughs> like for my my personal opinion with, with uh, Royston, take no offense, the Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh, oh no, that's the, the, the I, Sugar I Plum Fairy because like it, it's, it's. How does that one go? Uh, is that oh yes okay 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 but see and 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 for me it's a logical progression because it, it's it's a very whimsical song it's a very intense song when you get into the 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 quick shifts so that's that's to me that's that's what I see when I you know when I hear so you, so you hear Glockenspiel when you think of me yes that's right I appreciate that. yes oh, yeah. yes <laughs> I love the Glockenspiel it's, oh, I it's, mean it's one of your yeah it's it, it it's it's sits in my same category head uh, category as as the theremin okay it's, yeah just because it's well it's metal <laughs> I don't know why it just that's what comes to my mind well, I mean thank you. I Rob, Rob and I have said it I don't know how many times probably a million. If you don't have a Glockenspiel, really, what do you have? Uh, a hurdy gurdy. You should have a hurdy gurdy. I mean, that's, really? that is, if I had to put an instrument to, to Keith, the hurdy gurdy would be <laughs> would be Keith. Oh, they need to come back. They're wonderful. Oh yeah, no, it's it's awesome, but mainly because it can be played by a monkey. <laughs> I qualify. I know. I, know. I qualify. That's why. It's hey man, funny. that's that's why I'm a drummer because I just beat on things. I could see, I, I, I could I could see, see that. that. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I've seen your videos, but it, yeah. it's usually it's you're doing Renaissance covers, you know, and mm-hmm. and, and it's it, it's not it's one drum. It's it's oh not, yeah, it's not a a set. Oh oh yeah, catch, which catch me on a drum kit, dude. It, 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 <laughs> in my head, you're like animal. Oh for sure. <laughs> so what what do you hear when you? I've got it. I'm blue and da 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 Let's face it, it's a great song. It is. It, just, it, it captures it is. the vibe, and we're in blue shirt. It is, awesome, but, but if, yeah. you, if you if you speed it up slightly, you get Maya Mahi, Maya Maho, Maya Maha. Yes, yes. But the one I did think of for myself the other day, um, especially as as of course I. Um, I don't love attention at all, and I just I, no. I loved it. No, you, you. sir, are a liar. <laughs> uh, being loving, especially entrances and all those things, it naturally came to mind. Uh, the also Sprock from Strauss. Bom, 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 b
bum, 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 bum. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of funny because it if, if ever you think like on scoring yourself, like everybody always goes with the if you had a, a, a theme song for like the rest of your life, like I know, and this is the funniest one that I can think of, Harrison Ford. Uh, he absolutely hates that John Williams score because everywhere he goes, yeah. they play it. And he's he. What was the award ceremony that he went to? He was like, "I absolutely hate that fucking song." <laughs> yeah. Yes. And he can get yeah. away with it because he's Harrison Ford. He's Harrison Ford. Yeah. But you oh. know, I mean, like to hear that song over and over. I, I always look at like moments, and even when I'm writing things that Keith and I are going to do, I think in my head the tempo of of like, okay, this is the theme that I would put to this. This is the song that I would put to put to this thing. Um, let me let me try to match that. And it's really hilarious because earlier somebody said, you guys are like Abbott and Costello. And I'm yeah, like, I, I totally can see that. And fuck you, because that's funny. <laughs> uh, and I should have thought of that before oh, you. Statler and Waldorf. That was that, that was that, another one. No, I was that say, was I my could, first totally one because that. we were on the parapet. And I was yeah. like, dude, we should totally do this. And I, I, I went into the other the other uh, turret, and, and he's in one, and we're sitting there just heckling people. <laughs> so so maybe as a bit of foreshadowing. Ooh. Um, so Stadler and Waldorf on the parapet this upcoming summer. It could happen. That, that, it could happen. Maybe, you, maybe you, not. I don't know. You, you have, know, to, you know you have we, to come to the fair and find out. But you know what we need, though? We What's need that? a good music uh, accompaniment. We do. To play to our silliness. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a glockenspiel a or a hurdy gurdy. Yes. So speaking of that, do you do you play any other instruments? I play piano. Okay. So, yeah, piano also. I, I'm 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 a lifelong and, and vocalist. You know, it's funny looking looking back. I, in, in my musical career. I it was it was prophesized <laughs> that I was going to be actually actually a professional vocalist. Really, it's because, funny because I have never heard you sing. Well, I'm, I'm I'll try to be modest here, but I'm told I ain't bad. <laughs> I, I mean, no, and, and I'm just saying, modest. you know, I, I spent I spent eight weekends and yeah. we hung out after hours and I have never heard you sing. Well, now, in his defense, violin or fiddle, in your case, when you're when you're they're, playing, they're the same. It's, it's, Do you have a spotlight handy? No, I, 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 I don't. A fiddle and a violin are different, my friend. Um, How so? <laughs> I, I have several responses. I want to hear yours. Charlie Daniels did not play a violin. Correct. He learned on the violin. Yeah. Well, uh, well, he didn't play one. Okay, yeah, he uh, he did. If he learned how to play one, uh, whatever, one has to learn how to violin before they're different. Fiddle. I don't care. Um, <laughs> but as I was saying, you can't really sing and play at the same time. I, I think that would be. Ooh, I think that's a challenge. I think that's a challenge. Difficult. Out, out of uh, every one that I've seen, I don't ever remember seeing anyone play and sing it now they'll stop and they'll sing yes, and then they'll fair, play fair. i was gonna say like the closest... Char- charlie daniels is a perfect example he plays and then he sings and then he plays i was i was but i don't s- ever remember seeing anyone do both at the same time i think the closest have, that I you can good... come to is celtic woman celtic they woman their their, their violinist yeah. does sing but she uh does something unconventional she actually lifts off the chin rest yeah so to sing yeah. To be fair, we're also considering, you know, we have to, you have to, it's, it's a, it's a light clamping with your chin and your jawbone that you have to, you know, take right. the violin in place, of course. But that being said, yeah, I, I actually, just because I want to show you, I think, I think you'd enjoy it, that there is a really fabulous context um, of singing and playing the violin at the same time. Do, may I show you? Yeah. We get a private show. We get a private show. And then we got, then we got, and it's not that kind of show. Royson, put your pants on. Hey, hey, oh, my hey, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. Well, there goes our rating. Hey, hand me, <laughs> hand me some of those ones. <laughs> <laughs> I got quarters. That's all I got right now. I was unprepared. To me, if Royston was a song, it would be Barbie. Barbie? As in, I'm a Barbie girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's a Royston world. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> I'm fantastic. He's elastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, I'll keep these off so I can get myself. You can space. pull his hair. <laughs> <laughs> see, uh, he doesn't even care. <laughs> okay. Um, 
so this this technique is called chopping. Oh. Um, so the it's um, I, I I love learning how to chop, and this this is this is the way that oh. the fiddler we're, can back we're missing literally him. Literally anything. Um, you're, you're, oh, can you see me? No. You're he's he's gone. There, he, no, there he goes. There he there is. There we go. Okay. Ah, here we go. Um, so this, uh, so the, the the chop itself is is just percussive. Um, it's it, actually by itself, it's not all that pleasant to sound. It, it's a crunch, right? But here's what you get. So basically, by adding chords now, now on the violin, we can only you know we can only confident play play two strings at the same time with chord and combinations, which is very much the thing. So etc. But when you add the chop and you add rhythms to it, you get some pretty diverse and really a cool number of effects, like so. That so sounds like, so familiar. It does. You heard me. You heard me do that affair. Yeah, oh, that's so, probably yeah, why that. Because yeah. yeah. I'm like, wait, I know that song. And, uh, yeah. I think. And, and well, that well, you've, you've heard the progression. <laughs> so as a result, um, let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go, turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let's go away, bother me anyway so there you go so that's one way it's, it's actually pretty peaceful just by just by chopping and singing okay and that is awesome okay no okay. no 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 hold on hold on hold on that that is now my my official favorite version of that song yes Thank you. dude i could totally listen to that like, song like, if it was that way and that's in competition with the guy that did the metal metal cover version of that song dude he did a good job though. Dude, that, but what made it funnier is, is he's on like a child size drum set yes <laughs> But that is, I mean, okay, so that that's cool, dude. Like, so it is possible. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where it, it's kind of an oddity. You don't see it very often then. Um, yeah. you, you won't see, I mean, there's the performer that we, we had initially uh, referenced without saying a name uh, who dances uh, while they're, they're, they're moving but um, or while they're playing. So somebody that sings would be an oddity. Yeah. In that that same vein, one genre I do see it in. Uh, it's actually that you asked if to play other instruments. I haven't yet, but I it it is one thing I'd really like to pick up once I can hopefully maybe fund it. And that is a nickel harpa. Uh, you familiar with nickel? It's well, let's see. I'm, g generally, you see them a lot in Swedish groups. So I don't know if it's Swedish specifically, but you see them in those areas. And when I, it's it's a beautiful instrument. It's uh, think think um, auto harp. Well, actually, it's kind of like. Um, it's a boat instrument. It sits. Um, it sits kind of almost in the same way that a guitar would. Okay. Um, and then you, you bow it from down below. Oh, I yeah. know what you're talking like about. Like a child of spy, kind of the same. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it has. Um, it's. It's. They're lovely. I really, really like the nickel harpa. Um, the and then nickel harpa. The one that I want to learn, mm -hmm. and and it's it's from what I understand, it is an intense uh, learning experience. Is the erhu, Ooh. which is the Chinese violin. Okay. Um, sure, sure. The the body of it is actually uh, cylindrical and it extends towards the rear of the of the play, but okay. it's played off of the off of the knee, mm. off of the lap. Yeah. And Nickel Harper has the same ambiance in that. Yeah, indeed, you, you can bow it and then you can you'll click the keys, which will form chords for you, and then people very much sing on top of that. Yeah, I love the idea, and I've seen this done in some very very stirring, beautiful, very very spooky performances where they'll they'll sing ballads and um, oftentimes sad stories or spooky stories things like that while they while they both nickel harpa etc and then they'll break off into a verse yeah and then they'll go back I uh, that that's the the next the next area in a very specific way that I want to take some of my performance strategy beautiful instrument and that I can sing and storytell on top of that oh, that'd that's be cool fun. Dude. that that'd like be kind of neat I, I think that yeah. would be that would be for an audition if somebody wanted to do uh, a, an actual bard like somebody that, that yeah. played a lute and told a story while they're... That's the vibe, yeah. You know, now, it's not that I can't bow chords on the violin, but I, I think... Um, it's a little easier. It, it is, yeah. yeah. And not to mention, you're, you're not... Uh, I mean, for one thing, I, I believe it just... It, generally speaking, yeah, yeah, on the knee or it just sits on hangs right. on strap. It's, it's physically more comfortable. Right. The violin, um, it can do so much, but it's not exactly the most comfortable setup right wow um, that looks incredible I, I just pulled i just pulled yeah, it up over here really it looks cool. incredibly complicated it's, it's, it's it generally not really um, wow okay it's it's a bit in the same way that the accordion does a lot of the work for you the auto harp does a lot of the work for you which it, again is a wonderful advantage so it, it actually the, the it, it's it's very cleverly constructed yeah you can get some cool things out of it but it doesn't it doesn't take nearly the uh 
a um, irritating amount of amount of skill to get the most basic right. throws out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it up. It. Give me one yeah. second here. Yeah, we're just gonna. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a super it's a super cool looking instrument, but oh, I've seen this before. Yeah, I I have fun. seen this before. Yeah, so we'll click on that just to give a better yeah, image. Yeah, there you there. go. There you go. And there's our sponsor for the day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Buy some boots and a nickel harpa. That I I I see what you're saying. Like that would be kind of fun um, to to kind of learn how to do. Um, you know that that's one of the the biggest things that always boggles my mind and even after uh you know doing the the melodies unveiled that we did uh you know trying to keep the the instruments cared for while you're at a oh, venue yes. um whether you know i mean indoor in a symphony hall it's easy you know you, you, you it comes out of the out of the case and then you don't really have elements to worry about uh what are some tips that you have for people that want to perform at a festival well remember your instrument um uh, remember in 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 Star Wars: Attack of the Clones, uh, Anakin loses lightsaber because he's a dumbass, um, and Kenobi <laughs> brings it back and goes, "This weapon is your life." This, this <laughs> that you can't see. There we go. There you go. This yes. weapon is your life. Um, so, outside of just the most basic, okay, I'm taking extreme precautions. I'm I I, I have to be very mindful, especially with with a smaller folk whom I ex- very almost exclusively cater to, very specifically, as we know. Um, that there 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 may be the temptation if it's it's there's no malice in the slightest, but it's just a fascination of oh my goodness, I have to. So I I anticipate that will likely happen. It always does. Um, closest we ever came to any serious damage was was someone decided they wanted to bring down their their axe. So I was, I was so I managed to um, I managed to while bowing I managed to hold the axe while bowing and I was like oh, my lord. <laughs> so that was if rare. anybody uh, has that, that picture, rare, yeah, but I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> if <laughs> anybody a, has that was, picture, that do a me a favor moment. and send that to <laughs> renaissancerascals at gmail because that needs to be a t shirt. Oh, for Especially sure. Especially after the tagline that we created last last year, where it's it's pronounced violins not, not violence, violence. <laughs> right yes. uh, and see a great a, caption for that was don't don't ask me any questions yeah, during no, the performance don't ask me for <laughs> stairway to heaven <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so the um so yeah the, the, the very likely possibility that uh, that, that that young young folk will be um and again and i i consider it very complimentary when when they want to do that because it means that they're engaged that's wonderful oh yeah At the absolutely same time, we have to consider the safety of course um now um the the reality especially playing outside um you have to think about what you're going to encounter heat sweat uh dirt and just general grossness um <laughs> right. yeah. now uh, i i can i can only play so shall we say germanically after a few weeks in because my fingerboard just gets really really gunked up my fingers are beyond disgusting um and there's only so much hand washing you can do so right. just anticipate a very realistic amount of crud is going to build up on your instruments so um but remember you know that this is this is a this is a luxury item in the same way the luxury car is correct so, so you know these these things my, my violin is over 200 years old Oh and, wow! And it will okay. remain, yeah. And it will remain so kind of like Keith, <laughs> kind of. It's it, almost, almost. Yeah, I'm getting there. And it will remain um, beyond my lifetime to whomever I pass it down to, and um, until the end of time. Um, but again, just just like uh, your higher end automobile, um, it takes maintenance just like anything else. Um, I have to. I actually have one. Um, if you look, it's it's actually not even that hard to see. You can see that key. That's a crack oh, that grew. Yeah, so I have that yeah. wood. It's wood cracks. It's just yeah. Oh, so wood. Um, yeah, um, heat and wood aren't mortal enemies, but cold and wood yes. are mortal enemies. Now, there's also cold, the strings too, because the strings will 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 uh, get out of tune. Might, yeah, the, well, in tunefulness. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, I, I. Oh yeah, you'll do a lot more tuning, especially outside. Um, but the 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 cold is actually more of the worry. Now, thankfully in Colorado, being that it's so dry here, we don't have that too much to worry about. Because if you if you have uh, moisture in the air plus wood, it collects in. Now pl- add cold to that, especially extreme it, cold. You've got a recipe expands, for cracks, yep. and that's of course very dangerous. Even so, I still would. I, I I could leave this in the car 
overnight in the summer, that would be okay. I still probably wouldn't just because, you know, just liability. But um, but in the, in the winter, never. Under no circumstances. I don't care how dry it is here. Never. Yeah. Um, in the same way now, um, humidifiers. Um, I, I'm asked regularly, um, and so I've resulted in, I've asked people that really know. So what's 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 the what is the real poop on humidifiers? And I've been told, well, um, if, for example, humidifying cord that's that's rubber. You soak it in water to give it a, a shake, and then you can set it inside. And yes, you're right. It, it will it will change the color of the sound, and it will bring your violin up to the right um, level of humidity. However, the problem is once you take that out, um, no exaggeration, under five minutes is going to dry out. Right. So the back and forth is not good. No. So now if you live in the bayou, if you live in the south where it's super wet, sure. Yeah, that that's prob- – now check with your ch- – please consult your local luthier. Um, but uh, I, I, from what I understand, that's a That's, that's a somebody that makes violins, Keith. And repairs violins. Uh, repair, yeah. It's a repair yeah. technician. Yeah. Repair yeah. slash maker. Yes, exactly. Yes. So yes, uh, but um, in, in more humid areas, that's probably okay. Um, but after – in fact, it's actually the very – first Monday after every season, I take my violin to a, to a shop in Denver and I leave it with them for a few days and I, and they deep clean it for me. Yep. They uh, repair the varnish. Even, even now, I've got a couple of varnish chips. It's just bound to happen. Which is what um, we did um, following right. the festival yeah, because that's we took uh, her instrument, even though she was only out there for one day, uh, we still took it in at, at, as your your advice because you're like, dude, there's there's dust here. There's mm-hmm. it's gonna collect inside of there. There's really not much yeah. that you can do about it. And and let's be frank, your own your own body grossness yeah. is gonna build up on that one as well. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So the yeah wood um, when you know varnished and treated wood, it will last in extraordinary amounts of time with with the proper care, yep. keeping it away in cool, dry places, those types of things. Um, let's see strings. Um, uh, the I I don't go a few weeks into one season without a couple of my strings starting to unravel, so it's just an immediate swap in, swap in, swap out, no big deal. Um, any um, any string player in in the working world has a set of gently or or even used uh, strings that have already been stretched out as backups because if let's say a string breaks, I haven't had a string break on me in a long time, but. Um, I was knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, no, I got you. <laughs> uh, but uh, but mine will unravel. So a string could break, a string could fray, whatever. Right. You need to be able to have a one that's already broken in. So, so basically go, have so a, swap them out. an yeah. emergency kit. Yeah. I, I mean, that's basically, you know, and this is something that I, I learned the hard way um, with costuming. You know, like <clears throat> have a repair kit. I, I brought a sewing kit with me to the campgrounds because oh, I was yeah. like, mm-hmm. I'm going to rip something. It's going to happen. Yeah. You know, um, that's very standard. Yeah. Um, and so same thing with, with your instruments then, you know, make sure that you have like for a violinist, you nail know, clippers. what's that? Nail clippers. Nail clippers. Yeah. That your bow hair now, bow hair break. That's just what, in fact, I, I have a, I have a slightly, I, I have a just one that's left over. The important thing with a, with any bowed instrument or with a bow in general is that when a bow hair breaks, it's, it's expected. Don't ever rip them out like this. You want to just clip, clip them, them because, the yeah, because it's held in there with cork. So if you rip one out, it's going to cause others to fall out. Yep. So just clip it. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. And then I usually have, um, typically you should have your bow rehaired every, oh, a couple times a year. Yeah. I, I, along those lines of what I do, I definitely have it rehaired after fair. She's um, she's already went through uh, one bow. Yep, which well, was actually so pretty far. pretty good. Well, it was pretty <laughs> was good because that, so that one lasted her for a year and a half. Yeah, you know, uh, and it was surprisingly, uh, I think, right after Santa Fe. Okay, that we uh, we had to take it in and and just swap it out because right now we're renting. Uh, the violin because we're not going to buy one until she gets to a full size. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just, yeah. I'm a, I'm a thrifty person when it comes to certain things. Um, I don't like to, to waste money on something that, that she's going to outgrow while, yeah, course, it would yeah. be cool to be able to hang it on the wall and everything, but it's like Expensive. that, that is, is the truth. Is, well, if you want me to laser engrave her name in one of her old ones and put it on the wall, be happy yeah, that no, no, that's, that's all right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things that it's yeah. like, now we're good, dude. Yeah. Uh, we'll, but, we'll um, just go ahead and, and deal with that. Yeah. So, um, now again, uh, heat and sun, Generally, I, uh, some sun is okay. I wouldn't recommend hours of exposure, but again, it, again, it's varnish. It's it's relatively okay. Now, rain. That that is the single 
most dangerous thing to the especially something that I've is, seen you actually go and pack up mm -hmm. because yeah, so what it I drops have, or or it yeah. started clouding. So what I do, I have to so I I, I kind of I'm I'm watching the patrons, I'm interacting with the patrons, I'm also watching the sky pretty much all day. Right. And I'm just looking out for say, so, okay, I think we're okay. A couple but as we know, a couple speckles can turn into a monsoon in thirty seconds. Oh, absolutely. So I just kinda of go, Well, do I want to risk it? And then if if, if as is the case, I just if, if it starts to more than a drop or I can stand her under a tree, that's probably okay. But if it's more than just a drop or two, and I mean any more than just a drop or two, I just bolt right. to my and I pack it up very securely and I get on my backup instrument, that's the twenty buck fiddle that has all but been underwater. <laughs> um, oh, now, if you're looking for a good, should we say, all-weather bow, highly recommend carbon fiber. Wood bows are wonderful. I'm a really big fan of carbon fiber. This is a Coda bow. Um, carbon fiber is terrific because it is a lot, it won't warp. Uh, bows, uh, wooden bows warp. Wood warps in general, especially with sure. moisture. Carbon fiber can't warp. It's great. This is a terrific bow. It's also about 10 grams lighter than your average bow, so I can get very powerful Brahms and Beethoven sound out of it. I can also get nice, delicate, broken Mozart, Mozartian sound out of it. It's very utilitarian, versatile bow. Highly recommend Coda bows. Um, and let's see. I think that about covers it. Yeah, yeah, mo yeah. Moisture, moisture is your biggest enemy, and just say, expect a cleaning and a servicing. You know, every, every once in a while, your strings. Um, uh, clean your. Oh, string cleaning. Um, a, a very fine grained steel wool, just a brush on the strings, because rosin will accumulate and build up over time. So every few weeks, a quick brush with that's not a bad idea. It should be rosin. It's it's kind of rosin in, rosin on, rosin off. So be cleaning it. Um, for cleaning the strings and the fingerboard, um, rubbing alcohol. Don't get rubbing alcohol on the on the varnish of the wood, and then get get an actual um, wood instrument cleaner and polish. And don't get that, and get that on the on the wood, but don't get that on the strings or the fingerboard. There. That's a lot of information. That's a lot, that's a lot to know. So uh, back it up, re re rewind all that fun stuff if you need to. If you have any questions regarding instruments, Keith and I are not those type of people, but we know a guy. I know a guy. And we can uh, get you in contact with them or just ask your question, get you the answer. All you got to do is shoot us a, a message either on Facebook or send us an email at renaissancerascals at gmail.com. Absolutely. We'll take care of that. But, dude, this has been a very informative uh, episode and I, I as always I love seeing you I, I yeah, appreciate you coming course. down Thanks. from Wyoming to come hang out with us <laughs> well Colorado still just b b border yeah well you know Livermore. for the borderlands it, it's more impressive when I say that you traveled so far I mean. yes. <laughs> well, and, and for people who haven't heard of Livermore which who could blame me it's population 50 um, uh, the, the, the red wild. the red feather lakes area okay 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 yeah Way, way north. Way, way north. Way, way north. But, you know, yeah, it, it's... wonderfully beautiful up there, but it's, yeah, it's, it's very We nice. are, Keith and I are both excited to walk the streets again and see you out there and Absolutely. see you do your thing. And hopefully, if you're listening or you're watching, um, make sure you give our friend Arlen uh, McNaughton a, a stop. Give him a tip. You know, a couple bucks goes, you know, he likes the ones that jingle, you know, he'll take the ones that jingle, but he prefers the ones that fold. Might be a little foreshadowing there on what I'm doing this year. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. My, maybe. my favorite thing is is having an experience with you in whatever form that is. And if, if st someone's stopping, and if you want to stop and listen to me even for a few moments, uh, please bug me. I, I live for requests. Yeah, I, I really do. I, I want I want to play what you want to hear. That's the that's the best part. I I, I can play you a million things you haven't heard. He's, I'd like to hear what you want to hear. He's got one. Go for he, it. He doesn't even know what he just did. <laughs> yep. Yep. I keep a book of all the ones now, that I now I've got I months know. to go. Oh, what can I screw with him? <laughs> Challenge accepted. Oh, right. There we go. Well, because Ooh, if, 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 I like if, it. If you, if you throw one out there, if I know it, I'll play it. If I know of it, I'll figure it out. If I don't know it, I'll reach in my in one of my pouches and bring out a um, and bring out my little book and I'll write it down and then I'll get you next week. All right, that I like it. Oh sure. Or all your or he makes you hum a few bars. So oh I'll, yes, yeah. Or sometimes it's like oh I, I I might know it but I might not know the title. Yeah, sure. Very good. I yeah. remember that one. You're absolutely yep. right. I'll say could, could you remind me how it starts? Then sure, probably. Yep. So I think That's so. We'll, 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 actually, so. We'll, we're going to wrap it up, but I, I do need to end on this question. <laughs> If one was to be wooing a Baroness, oh my God, or a potential Baroness, what song would one play? Mm. I 
had the time <laughs> of my life. <laughs> What's a good classic love song? Yeah. No, no, no. Like, like classical music. Classic. Classical, yeah. Uh, yes. My brother's going Frank Sinatra. I was like, oh, well, okay, I'll, I'll throw in a Frank song that's or it Frank era. Um, and don't forget, folks, that's what you get, folks, for making whoopee. It's yeah. a classic. Yeah. That's a folks. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah, it. No, but, oh, right. but more um, classical. Classical. Yes. Classical. Mm, so what would what would? Mm, so Bra- for Bra- instance, Brahms was in love so, with. So uh, let me let me Claire set the let me set the scene. Played, okay, really. set the scene, sir. So let's just say. Oh, we'll throw out a fair. Let's say Colorado Renaissance Festival. Okay. So we're at the Colorado Renaissance yeah. Festival. Yeah, and let's say uh, there's an English baron from, and, from Umbersinia. From Umbersinia, yeah. yeah. And he's got a, 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 a sidekick? A sidekick, okay. uh, you know, partner who okay. happens to be Asian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big and, hat, and really big, big hat. Big he's got to have a big yeah. hat. Yeah, I mean, just hypothetically, if this happens, and he sees someone that he wants to woo. A tasty strumpet, yeah, if you would. Yeah, and there just happens to be a giggling fiddler there. And I said, I need your help wooing this said strumpet. What would we play? Lafayette Rose. Ooh, <laughs> oh, I don't know it. what he said, but I just... I got a little squishy. Um... Uh, I'm gonna teach it to you when we're all done. Oh, wow! <laughs> oh, there we go. See now, now, now we, we can we can. It's one of those. It's one of those. Everyone has heard it, but they're gonna. No one's gonna know what it's called. But you. I, yeah. I, it, it, what was the, the name? title? Is La from vie the, en rose. La vie en rose. Life is the rose. Life is the rose. Ooh. I'm gonna have to Google yeah. that. See, you wouldn't you'll, know. You'll this. Recognize him. You wouldn't. Know <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows this. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's beautiful. You yeah. in character would not know this because it's French, and we don't like the French. You don't like the French. Yeah. Didn't Eli I sing, fries. didn't Eli sing this song? I want to say Eli. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I thought Eli sang that. Possibly. I remember we, we, we musicians are way up in the back. We can't hear very well. But yeah, you know, that's I, true. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Yeah. I, I yeah. think I think I, I want to say Eli did sing the song, and I I want to say that the the backup uh, was um, played by Riley. That's right. Okay, was that the one they did? Yep. Yes. That's right. That yes. was. Yeah. That was. I couldn't hear them very well, but I, I remember. She, I, 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 I just. Yeah. I happened it to have a really lovely. good seat for that. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, Royston, thanks for coming down, Absolutely. man. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Uh, uh, it was our pleasure. And now we're gonna break bread here in a well, chicken wings in a second. <laughs> uh, I didn't make any bread, and I, I'm not gonna bother with the fries. Yeah, that's right. We need meat. Yes. Because I, I unfortunately don't have any scotch eggs. Yeah, well, that's all right. Which, by the way, I'll, I'll go ahead and extend the invitation to you. On uh, the 17th of March, we're going to be hosting uh, a soiree, if you will, a small get-together here, mm-hmm. where we will have some scotch eggs. Uh, it is That is St. Patty's Day. Uh, but we're also celebrating... My birthday. Okay. And I would love to be there. Thank we're going to have yes. Mr. Mr. Uh, Alto the Al- Magnificent. Alto the Magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Prince Otto. Uh, he's gonna come and and teach her how to and her friends how to fence. Yes, and okay. so we're gonna be in costume, and, and, it's we're, gonna be, and we're doing it in costume. It's gonna so. be great because my neighbors are gonna look at me like, "What the hell's going on?" <laughs> and that's what we do. If you're not who your neighbors talk about, who are you? Exactly. Oh no, my neighbors talk oh, about me. I know they do. They just don't do it to my face. <laughs> if they did, I'd be like, "Yeah, that was." Me. I'd hate to be the person my neighbors didn't didn't. Think things about me, true right? Or not. Oh yeah, no, whatever. <laughs> That's a boring life. But again, thanks for coming out. Yeah, we uh, also me. thank the audience for for tuning in uh, yeah. to learn about uh, our favorite gigg- giggling fiddler, the one and the only Arlen, Arlen McNaughton. McNaughty Naughton. McNaughty. Thanks again. Um, we got some more uh, highlight reels coming up. Where we are going to talk to... Character Spotlights. Character Spotlights. Uh, the next one that we're going to be doing is with uh, Flim Flam. Yes. We're going to talk about how he Flim Flammed his way to the Renaissance Festival. Yes, absolutely. And hopefully, in the future, we'll have the hexiest of them all. Oh, yeah. But that's a little bit of foreshadowing for you. Yes, of course. Well, that'll work, That'll too. work, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining. Thank Once, you, friends. That's going to end it for today. Thanks again, friends. My name is Rob. I'm Keith. And we are the Renaissance Rascals, joined today by the tiny violinist and Arlen McNaughton. McNaughton. Don't forget, like and share us. I like to be shared. Yes, and make sure that you uh, visit Son, uh, Son of Sandlar. Yes. For your 
all of your bootery needs. Booter- Can I say that bootery? Bo- bootery is that, I, I don't is know if it's cobbler? a word, but it Cob- sounds good. I, I mean, it that sound pretty yeah. decent. Cobbler, Cob- cobbler. Well, that's more shoes, isn't it? Oh no, I take my boots, boots to a cobbler. Boots are in fact shoes. Yeah. Boots, boots yeah. are in fact shoes. Boots and gets and boots and gets and boots and gets and boots. A bootery. A bootery. I like. See, that's why I like. Don't make your toes curl. That almost sounds like they're Canadian. A bootery. What's a bootery? Yeah. What's that a boot? And as I can prove, they will make your toes curl. Oh. Yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for today. Thanks, guys. All right, let's get out of here. Goodbye, friends. Bye.